Hey, what's up? It's just Nick, WBLS, and we are here with the incomparable Yolanda Adams. I can't even go through your catalog of all the Grammys and Stellars you've won. Right. I mean, you are legendary. Thank you. Absolutely, so thank you for taking your time to come out. Listen, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah. The doors of the church are open, Yes, they are. They open, come on in. <laughs> church doors at that, which we'll yes. get into your latest single. Mm -hmm. um, but you recently celebrated a birthday, so happy belated birthday. Thank you, thank you so much. I'm very proud of it. You know, it's, uh, it's a blessing to grow, you know, in wisdom and knowledge. Yes. And uh, I'm I'm excited because I'm doing a whole bunch this year. <laughs> yes, you are. I mean, okay, where do we start? First of all, the acting. Yes. Danita Jordan. Danita Jordan is a mess. <laughs> she I, is a mess. You don't want to play with Danita Jordan. Absolutely. How was that role for you? Oh gosh. Um, I've been acting since I was in middle school. Yes. You know, you guys are young, so we called it junior high school when I, when I was growing up. Yeah, you know, you know, <laughs> junior high school. So I've been acting since then, acted in high school, did some uh, community theater in college. And I, once I graduated from Texas Southern University, HBCU, yes, mm -hmm, okay. historically black college, um, I, I started in broadcasting. Wow. Because my degree is in radio TV journalism. Wow. Yes. Okay. And a lot of people think it's in musical uh, theater or music or something like that. Nope. It is actually in radio TV journalism. Wow. And I thought I was going to work at our CBS affiliate. They um, gave us the jobs one week. And then you know how corporate buyouts happen. Yes. And they don't tell anybody. And then they're like, oh, well, you know, uh, next week you won't be here anymore. That part. Keep um, on And so I, I kept doing the music, you know, been doing music all my life, but the acting part kind of like, like, oh yeah, I really like this. So now that I don't have a job, I'll probably act, act. Mm. And then it was like, nah, I got to get a job because I got to pay these bills. <laughs> <laughs> so I started teaching, but um, that bug was still there. That acting bug was still there. And fast forward to 2019, we started discussing Kingdom Business. Yes, It was supposed to be on NBC and somehow, you know, with all of that stuff, it didn't happen. And BET came back and said, we'll take it. And here we Shout are today, to two seasons. We're headed for season three and season four. And I'm really excited about Miss Danita Jordan, who is totally <laughs> not like me. Okay, well, she sings gospel music and she loves to dress and she loves her family, but that's it. That's, that's as close as we are, because she's a mess. Were there any parts that made you uncomfortable or you were really challenged when you read the scene and you was like, whoo, I'm really gonna have to tap in? Oh, oh, absolutely. Because I am the type of person who believes in allowing people to be who they are. Mm. And I don't believe in hindering anybody's purpose or trying to tell them how to live their mm. lives. You know, my job has always been to encourage people and yes. give them inspiration. But Miss Danita is like, look, you messing with my stuff. You you messing with my number one status and my queen of gospel status. I got to get you out of here. Yes. And when you play a character like her, you have to find the humanity in her. Yes. So I had to dig deep into how was she raised? How did her mother and father mimic life and show her life? Mm. Uh, you know, navigating ministry and all of the stuff that they did. And, and some of the stuff that her mom and dad did was not too cool. And so that's how she becomes this ice queen who does, you know, who thinks everybody's wrong but her. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, you, you know, and, and we know people in our lives who kind of embody that. But with this being drama and fantasy as well, you know, you tap into those acting chops and here we are today, two yes. seasons later. You said, congratulations oh, on that. Thank you. Thank you. Said you said some very key um, notes that I think that a lot of people can take because you just never know what someone's background and journey mm -hmm. is. And you see, 
you know, the protected person, mm -hmm. a persona that they've created, but there's always a reason for why that person is like that. Absolutely. So I love that. that Absolutely. You said that. So yes. that's why you got to give folks grace. Absolutely. Give them grace the first time, though. Okay. <laughs> that fourth time. No. <laughs> that part. Well, you slay that, and and I'm glad that you delve into your second passion. Is your first passion or your second? The singing uh, or the that, acting? Which one do you? Oh, uh, singing is always first. Always. Yeah. But you're equally just as good. Oh, an thank actress. you. Thank you so yes, much. Absolutely. Yes. So we have that, but then you're also working on a new project. Yes. And you have a new single out. I have a new single, Church Doors, out. Yes. The album is already pressed mastered Let's we're go. excited about it it comes out september 13th yes and that has been a journey because we started who six years ago in 2018 wow. the day after the 2018 grammys jimmy jam and terry lewis and yes. i went into uh you know flight time studios and started writing we were all excited it's like oh yeah we're gonna get this thing done and then i got really busy in 2019 and then 2020 the pandemic yeah, for sure. and, and then 21 uh for me it was kingdom business for them, they had recorded a, uh, an album with Babyface. Mm. So they're all in Vegas doing, you know, a short little uh, residency and stuff. I'm like, hey, well, y'all could have had your sister <laughs> open up. but <laughs> <laughs> And so things just started happening, just like life. Yes. You know, I um, attribute this album to the way life ebbs and flows sometimes. And sometimes you just got to go with it. You know, when you can't change it, hey, flow with it and then do your best to make sure that you don't let the disappointments yes. depress you. Yes. Because a lot of people make permanent decisions in temporary places and mm. it's like, it's just a temporary place. This is not going to last for the rest of your life. You yes. know, it can't. Yes. And so now we're here, uh, 2024, September 13th, the album Sunny Days yes. comes out. I'm so excited about that. And I'm glad that we wrote music that speaks to the heart of the human condition. Mm -hmm. You know, we have songs on there about uh, prayer. Uh, I, I love to dance. So we have a few dance numbers oh, and yeah? we have some house mixes okay. and stuff like that. Oh yeah. So oh, you're yeah, going to be yeah, hitting yeah. the one, two step in the video. Oh, absolutely. Or? Okay. Oh, absolutely. You can check out church doors video on my YouTube channel, Yolanda Adams lifestyles. And, um, yeah, it's Wood, trending right now. It is trending right Clayton now. Well, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I'm just so excited about that. I'm like, you know, that it's gone past a million views because yes. of you, sir. And he's like, no, no, Amy, I'm good. I'm good. I'm like, no, nah, you did that thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, the internet is loyal to watching yes. their favorite shows and they're like, absolutely. You know, Kanan got saved. <laughs> did you see the jam? <laughs> I wonder if you read the comments. Do you read the comments? Absolutely. Does it make you laugh? Like, absolutely. Absolutely, because that wasn't even the intent. You know, I've uh, been a fan of his since uh, the Bobby Brown yes. uh, situation. And it's like, man, you know, he's he's very talented. He is. He's multifaceted and he's going to go a long way in this industry. Yes. And, and, and the sky's the limit for him. For you sure. Know? He's and he's a, a triple dancer. Threat. He's been he's dancing a, for people that don't know. Been dancing the ones that don't know. He's a darn triple threat. Yes. You know, so yeah. Absolutely. Well, I noticed you had mentioned, it's called Sunny Days, mm -hmm. and it was, you know, kind of supposed to come out during the pandemic, but then you know the timing, you know, God's mm -hmm. timing is always perfect. Always. And the fact that it's called Sunny Days after we went through such Mm -hmm. a, a crazy time. I don't know about you, but like God was really working on me inside the pandemic because, you know, we had to shelter in place shelter and he was place. like, I'm going to sit you down and yes. you don't have to think about some things. And we didn't know what was next. Yes. You know, when we're busy in the hustle and bustle of life, we can always kind of plot out what's next, you know, or plan out right. what's next. Okay, if anything happens, okay, I can go and interview for this, you know, I have these skills, blah, 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 but everything shut down, the world shut down. And did you notice that when we walked outside after everything had shut down, how clear the air was yes. and how, I mean, even in New York, you know, it's, it, it, the air wasn't as thick and you didn't hear the horns and 
it was just so peaceful. It was yes. almost like, whoa, wait a minute. This is heaven. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. What was your biggest lesson that you would say that you took from the pandemic? My biggest lesson is to love people in the present mm. because we lost so many people. And, you know, one day you call them and they're good. And then the next day they're rushed to the hospital because of respiratory issues or something like that. And then you don't see them anymore because they're gone, gone. And then you can't go to the hospital and be there with them. You know, there's only one person that can go into yeah. the room at a time. And because, you know, they have family members that are, you know, immediate family, only two family members per week could go right, up so right. by the time you're trying to get your you know your visit on you're a cousin or just a friend from a, from high school or something yeah. like that some of them did not make it and so that taught me that I already knew life was precious but I didn't know that we are as connected as we really are and people, oh, they live around the world. But if you're able to pick up your device, right. no matter what it is, and FaceTime someone, it's almost like they're actually there. Right. So um, my prayer is that I hope people learned what I learned, that life is precious. Yes. We don't know when our time is. Mm -hmm. And so live your life to the fullest right now. Right now, mm -hmm. be present, I love absolutely, that. Absolutely, absolutely. that's a word. Yeah. <laughs> so sunny days, that is what it, it's giving. It's giving, you know, live your life in the present. Tell me more about the, the project and what the inspiration is. Oh my gosh, so uh, the, the inspiration behind it was to make sure that I checked myself because there are certain things that we all deal with in life. You know, uh, those of us who are with a relationship with God, we always want to make sure that we are in a space where we hear his voice. Mm. And even if we don't hear his voice, we can sense in our heart his direction. And when he's not saying anything and when he's not moving you, you in a direction, that's when you stand still mm. and you just let him be God. Yes. And so there were moments when I had to do that. And then there were moments when I knew, okay, I need to write a song about prayer. I need to write a song for that person who feels that they're in a, in a place where they, they have no idea how they're going to get out. Yes. And so we wrote the song, When You Pray. And oh my gosh, it... It, it, it lets the listener know that they're not the only one. I mean, think about it. There are 8 billion pe plus yeah. people in this world. Yeah. Nine times out of 10, there's about a million people going through something similar yes. to you. So don't fall for uh, it's, only the, me. it's only me. And then you get into this depression and depression, uh, you know, when depression sinks in, you feel no hope. And so after we wrote the prayer song, we wrote a song about hope. It's called the Hope Song. And then there's this uh, song about um, love. You know, of course the ultimate love is God. Yes. But in our existing, trying to find the right people to put in our corners, tr trying to find the right mate, trying to find the right partner, trying to find the right person that matches with you, you have to ask yourself the question, can I love somebody the way I want to be loved? Mm. Am I willing to sacrifice the way I want someone to sacrifice for me? Am I willing to go the extra mile or am I just requiring that of them? Mm. And sometimes, Can yeah, oh yeah, sometimes, <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to you. <laughs> sometimes we have to ask ourselves the hard questions, especially when it comes to love and yes. family and all of that, because you know, we can get a little selfish as humans. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> we can get a little selfish. And, and hey, trust me, I know that whole um, defense thing. That's one thing. But uh, requiring someone to do something that you wouldn't do for them, that's kind of like, mm, that's not reciprocal. You don't want to start a relationship like that or you don't want to start anything, a business or whatever, you right. know. And so the question is, can I love somebody the way I want to be loved? Mm -hmm. And then there's this lullaby. 
I used to sing to my daughter Taylor when she was a baby and um, I just knew what difference it made in her little spirit because she's such a calm person. Mm. And I said, hmm, what if I write a lullaby for an adult? Mm. And it's called I Give You Peace. Ooh. And you know, as we grow up, you know, when we're kids, we have no worries and things like that. We don't even know to worry. That part. <laughs> that part. And then the older we get, we forget that being able to just trust God and lay it on the line is what he wants anyway. Mm. He wants you to be that big kid with him. Yes. And so uh, you have to, and, and the words say, embrace the change that you go through for in time it will reveal. Mm. Now face the day with expectancy because your wounded heart will heal. Mm. You know, there's a moment that you'll notice a joy that washes over you and takes the pain away. I love yeah, it. Yeah, so. The words in itself. Absolutely, absolutely. <sighs> yes. I love that. So you mentioned earlier um, when God speaks to you. Yes. So for someone who's listening, who's waiting to hear from God, mm -hmm. for example, I have a friend who's really trying to get in tune with God, but she's Absolutely. like, how do I know if it's me mm -hmm. or if it's God? Oh, that's such a great question. And I have a, a really good answer. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I tell um, folks that I um, mentor and folks that follow me. I am a proponent of journaling. Mm. I think it's I think it's one of the most magical things you can do. A lost art. A lost art. The fact that you write. Yes, absolutely. Um, and and when you're at the the crossroads of making decisions, like I said, you know, we make decisions every single day. You know, yes. you made a decision on how fly you were going to be today. And you vice know. versa. Oh, thank thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> okay. It, because everything starts with a decision. So when I talk to my students, I say, on one side of the page, I want you to write down what you think you hear. And if you don't hear anything, just say, I don't hear anything now. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, I want you to write down what you hear. And I want you to look at those things within a five minute span of time. And you can look at both of those uh, pages and figure out, wait, is this good for me? Or is this just me wanting so bad mm. to have some movement in my life? That's good. Because here's the thing, a lot of times God is really, really quiet. He's not constantly saying, oh, you should do this, you should do that, you should do that. Now, I'm not saying that he won't speak, but most of the time, it's, it's a matter of the heart. It's that heart thing. When you feel that uh, pulling and that tugging to do something kind, you know that's God. Yes. Because the enemy would never tell you, oh, go down to the soup kitchen and volunteer for a, uh, an hour. Right. Mm. Or go give your neighbor $500 so that they can help their kids in college. Of course, the enemy's not going to tell you to do Definitely. that. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, because those are God moments. Yes. And I, I think because we're so busy trying to find it on the Internet. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me see. Okay, my favorite person just said this, this, and that. Okay, but their favorite people say this, this, and that. Sometimes you got to pull away. You don't have to pull away for long, but pull away long enough to get readjusted, refocused, and then just let it flow. Yes. You know? How yeah. do you pull away when you when Yolanda is not singing her heart out? <laughs> how do you just relax? Oh, j same thing. Journal mm -hmm. because I find uh, I find a peace in writing my heart right. and writing my thoughts. And a lot of times when I write my thoughts, they turn into music. And uh, and, and music that has blessed the world. Thank you, Lord. Um, we were talking off mic about uh, water yes, and how it's, it, it's, it's a part of every human, you know, because we're 75 plus uh, percent water. All of us, our cells need it. You know, everything about us needs it. Yes. And that connection for me is real deep. I, 
I love the beach. I love to be around water. I love rivers. I love lakes. Yes. I love all of that. And so for me to be able to get away, even if it's for a couple of days, and just get by some water and hang out and take my little journal again. Yes. Like, what am I thinking right now? What's going on? What are you saying, God? If you're not saying anything cool, I'll just be right here. Okay, right. just chilling. And what I <laughs> so recently I moved found that, out yeah. golf too, which is... Oh, yes. I, I had no idea. <laughs> yes. I have been playing golf uh, since, oh, since I was eight years old. My, my dad and my mom's dad, my grandfather they used to play all the time. And, you know, when you think son-in-law and father-in-law wouldn't get along, they got along so well. And they took my, my brother and I, mm. who was younger than me, he was five. And I was a daddy's girl. Oh my gosh, still a daddy's girl, but he's gone on to be with God. And so uh, we would go and he would have us at the driving range but uh, my dad and my grandfather would uh, play the full course and everything. And I just fell in love with it. Mm. I kind of dropped it when I went to high school because I started playing tennis. So you're just very athletic. Oh, our whole family is oh, very nice. athletic. What don't right. you do? <laughs> <laughs> Needlepoint. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. Uh, not that I don't want to, but I, I, you know, I grew up when crocheting was a yes. huge thing. So I still know how to do that. I got to brush up on my, uh, you know, on my multi-talented. Oh my gosh. On, yes. But yeah, but I, and puzzle books mm. are huge for me. Um, and really I take good three, for your brain. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'll take three or four of them on the plane with me. If I have like a two and a half hour flight, I'm into it. You know, I may take a little nap and then do it again. Yeah. But I've learned for me, my uh, creativity happens when I'm just really just relaxed. And I've learned how to love my alone time. Yes. And now that my daughter is grown up and in California, I've learned to let her have her space. And is it hard to stay away and like check on her? <laughs> like, mother, I'm grown. Yeah, that's my baby. <laughs> but you know, she told me when she was three years old, we were in California because I was recording day by day. And she's like, mom, when I get bigger, I'm gonna live in California. I'm like, okay, baby. She's looking at me with her little self. No, mommy, really, when I get bigger, I'm going to move to California. I said, you know what? Thank you, because I have enough time to get ready for you moving away from me. And, wow. you know, and so we have the best relationship because I give her her space and then she'll call or FaceTime. Mom, I need you. Yeah, no, so, I love that. Yeah. I love that. Well, you're busy, though. You're yes. on this tour. Let's yes. talk about it. I mean, how many legends can you put on one tour? <sighs> The miracle in this reunion tour is that all of us, all five of us, myself, Kirk Franklin, Fred Hammond, uh, Marvin Sapp, the Clark sisters, I forgot about Kiera. I love you, Kiera. She opens up for us. So wow. all six of our schedules worked. Mm. That's a that miracle. Happen? I was That's just a miracle. About to say. You know, people are like, oh, I, I, don't, I don't know what happens. Do, do miracles really exist? Trust us. We are on a reunion tour with 30 plus cities and our schedules work together. It's just, we were in rehearsals for two weeks. Yeah. With one another. Yeah. And to know that we all have the same mindset of being so grateful. Yeah. That we're still you know, inspiring, we're still uplifting, we're still teaching, and we're still letting people know um, that God loves them, he's not mad at them, yes. and he wants the best for them. It's just, it's, it's a pleasure and a privilege to do it. And you look like you're having fun. Oh, we are be cutting up. I see a little TikTok. We are having, so, <laughs> we are having so much fun. It's just, it should be against the law. Yeah, do you it have any funny be. stories? Because Kirk seems like he's a lot in himself. Listen, <laughs> Very listen, animated. We all have a Kirk story. Yeah. <laughs> because he'll come on stage while we're doing our portion. <laughs> and he'll just run around us. And we're supposed to act like he's not there. I'm like, I see you. I, <laughs> I see, see you. you. <laughs> I see you. Um, he's such a great person. Yeah. And... Um, 
And I'm glad that he has the success that he has. Yeah. Because there are very few people who can manage that. Mm. And I'm so proud of him. I'm very proud of Fred. Fred has had some health challenges. And he's a trooper. He gets on that stage and he sings like he was singing with commission. Mm. And of course the Clark sisters, you know, yes. we're, we're all sisters and I'm just so proud of them and how they have just opened up gospel music to so many people. You know, with You Brought the Sunshine, yes. that was one of the hugest crossover successes for them. And they're still doing it today, yes. you know, blessed and highly favored. Who doesn't know that song? Yes. You know, and I mean, then the, the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Oh my God! Everybody. Yes, yes, how yes, do you yes, yes. Guys, even how do you have a concert with so many hits? Like you just have to pick and choose. You I know have people to are pick like, and I choose, and and then you have to reassure them next year we're gonna come out with some more stuff. You yeah. know, because they're looking forward to it. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot of hits among oh, yes. five phenomenal yes. gospel oh, yes. artists. Absolutely, and you. Crossed over, open my heart. Yes. I mean, to be able to move in different genres, mm -hmm. you know, was that the goal? Or you was just like, you know, I'm just going to put this out and whatever happens, happens. You know, I've never said, okay, I'm going to record uh, projects that, um, that cross over here, do this. No, I've always wanted to show people how cool God is, you know, and that, you know, because... God gets such a bad rap from bad children that are supposed to be his, you know, mm. because they live limited. And in my household, because we were raised Baptist, we didn't have restrictions. I could listen to Aretha Franklin along with listening to Tremaine Hawkins. Mm. I could listen to the Jackson Five along with listening to the uh, Jackson spiritual heirs, you yes. know? So there was never this thing where I had to be this, I had to look like this, I had to wear that. Listen, I was modeling as a yeah. kid. So when but I went it. to my first uh, award show, I had no idea <laughs> that I was not supposed to wear a mini dress. Uh-oh. Ah! Oh my gosh, it was so funny to me. And people were looking until I opened my mouth and I sang, even me. And they were like, okay, I'm kind of conflicted because she got she this mini sing. dress on, but she can sing. And by the time we finished the song, they were like, you know. You can't do that. Yeah, no, well, I didn't care what they said because I had it on and it was on TV. So, yeah. And. And again, I, I thank God for the way I was raised because my mom and dad, grandmother, grandfather, aunts and uncles never put limitations on us. Yeah. And I think that's the worst thing we can put on our children, especially when they're trying to find themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, but what my parents did do is, you know, my, my, my uh, father was an athlete. So as an athlete and a coach, he made sure that we understood good health great nutrition, all of that kind of stuff. My mom was the music major. She made sure that we enjoyed all types of music and yeah. there was no limit to that. And then they so strategically allowed all six of us kids to be exactly who we are. Yeah. So I have a sister who is, uh, she's in administration and education. I yeah. have a brother who's a lawyer. I have another brother who's an actor and I have another brother who's an entrepreneur and I have a sister who is a grant writer and also an artist. How many siblings so, do you have? I know there, there are six of us. I'm wow. the oldest of six. And so when you look at how, and it's, and it's so phenomenal, how everything you grow up doing mm -hmm. shapes your life yes. and it shapes your world and it shapes the way you see things and it shapes the way you see people. You know, my mom and dad would bring in kids that were in college with us. And because their grants hadn't come through, they would allow them to stay with us until their housing, wow. uh, you know, manifested and all of that stuff. Wow. And so we learned that even though there were a lot of us, you, that you still have room to share. You still have room to care about somebody else's situation. Yeah. And it always worked out where we always had more than enough. 
we always had more than enough room to share. Yes. And, you know, I'm not saying we were rich as kids because, you know, we were wealthy in love and, and care and all of that kind of stuff and camaraderie and all that great stuff. But um, we had four bedrooms. You know, of course, there were six of us. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so we had four bedrooms, a nice size house. And so my mom and dad were like, well, why wouldn't we share? Yeah. You know, God has blessed us. And so I live my life like that. I've taught Taylor how to live her life like that. That's key. And, and we just, I just want people to understand, do not let the climate of the day, I don't care what, who it is, I don't care if it's one of your favorite artists or whomever, Never let somebody dictate to you how your heart is supposed to feel mm. and how you're supposed to care about people because that is one of the first commandments after loving God with all your heart. You're supposed to love your neighbor as yourself. So there's like a little B part before that second part comes. Mm. You got to know how to love you. Amen. And when you know how to love you, you can love anybody. Absolutely. It still takes a village. Yes, it does. And, you know, a lot of our children are dealing with anxiety. Yes. Because the village is gone. Because the village is gone and the village that they had didn't know how to process problems. Mm. You know? Yeah. In my day, folks would say, okay, so what's the problem? You know? back in the 60s, 70s. <laughs> so what's the problem? Okay, you find out what the problem is. Okay, how many solutions are there? What's the most appropriate solution to your situation? And so they taught us how to think critically. And I think as the generations passed, somewhere people started putting the responsibility on other folks to teach that. Yeah. And then, you know, people who are limited in the caring and the love department in their own lives can't teach you that. So can't teach you what they don't know. They cannot teach you what they don't know. And, you know, not that it, you know, it's a bad thing, but they just don't know. Yeah. Well, it seems like more and more people are finding God, especially yes. after the pandemic. So yes. to God be the glory for that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Before I let you go, what is one of your favorite scriptures? Oh man, I have so many favorite scriptures, but I have been living this scripture that is found in Ecclesiastes as well as um, Isaiah. God keeps me busy with the joy of my heart. I love that. And so when when I think that, oh my gosh, I have so much to do and you know, they're, they're I have to do this for the business. I have to do this for the ministry. I have to do this for the music. I have to do this, this, this. and I, I, I remember, hey, you asked God for this. Mm. He delivered. Mm. Now allow him to keep you busy with the joy of your mm. heart. And so that keeps me grounded because it's I like, yeah, ma'am, you asked for this. So you ready <laughs> let's for not act you like you didn't for? ask for these blessings. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people ask for things and they don't know the responsibility Absolutely. that comes with it. So Absolutely. That's, that's key. Yes. I love it. I love, love, love it. Thank yes. you so much for your time. It's been an honor talking to you. And thank you for having me because, you know, I, I you know, I know you guys have been kind of displaced with all of the movement and stuff like that, but I just believe that where you guys are going next is going to be so awesome. Thank you. And you'll be able to blossom even more. Yes. You know, congratulations on everything that you're doing. Thank you. you know, it's, you it's as obvious. Well. It's obvious that God has you here for a reason. And uh, I absolutely love uh, when young people get a chance to live out their passions. And I can tell with your thoughtful questions that you really think about what you do. And it's a joy to be yes. able to wake up in the morning and be you. It's like, that's thank so you. cool, ain't I it? I receive that. No, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I prayed for this. Yes. Speaking of God, Absolutely. Busy, I prayed for this. So yeah. I am just got to do my, my part. And yeah. that's spreading his word and being positive. So thank you. Absolutely. You've accomplished so much. I mean, I don't, I don't know where we go from here. Like, is there another level that you would like to achieve? You Listen, uh, whatever the level is, God, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> After the tour. After the tour. After the so tour. My, uh, my hope is that we are able to film Kingdom Business uh, seasons three and four together. Mm -hmm. So that's going to take me to Georgia for like six, seven months Ooh. if we do them both together. 
and it makes the uh, you know, it makes the uh, recording fresh. Yes, and it keeps you on your toes instead of going for three months and then going back home and doing the music and doing the business and all that kind of stuff, and then coming back you know, six months later and doing the next one. So that's one of my prayers that we do that. Bow your heads, please. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, and then also that Sunny Days goes all over the world and blesses people and lets them know that where they are right now is just the tip of the iceberg. God has so much more for them. If they'll just, you know, be obedient, listen to that voice, get you a journal and enjoy your life. I love it. Yeah. Church Doors is out now. Go run up those views. And September 13th, Sunny Days from the Yolanda Adams is out. Go cop it. Support, support, support Kingdom Music. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Absolutely. I sure appreciate you. you. Yes. Thank you God for watching. Bless you.